jokesters. What's up? What's shaking bacon? Guess what I got? A box. Little Caesar's Pizza. Okay, to be honest, this is a hot and ready pizza. It was hot and ready, but I went through the drive-thru and it took me three hours because someone in the front of me didn't order a hot and ready pizza. Yummy. I'm super excited about this. I'm just gonna eat, this is my plate. I'm the only one that lives here and I can do whatever the hell I want to do. I'm drinking water in my A&M cup and uh, it's one of those that turns green when it gets cold. Cool! What is up my pooksters? Huh? Oh, ooh, hot. But, mm, mm. Mm. That right there. Uh-huh. Oh, yeah. Mmm. It's like, after 1 o'clock, I have not eaten breakfast. It was Saturday, y'all. Um, I went to do volunteer work this morning. I, um, yeah, I just didn't get around to it. I'm hungry. I'm going to eat this whole pizza. What? You dare me to? Hmm. Hmm. Ah. All right, hold on. Let's just see how fast I can eat the pizza. I haven't put pizza down. I can eat fast. I'm a fast eater. Mm. So good when it's hot. Mm -mm -mm. When I was a kid, I was always a slow eater. I was always the last one at the table. But I guess I ate faster the older I got. Because there were seven of us growing up. And I kind of learned quickly. If you don't get your food first or quick, you won't get them. Uh-uh. Mm-mm. So y'all, Friday night, last night, usually every Friday night there's a home game for poker, like a tournament, and I played in a tournament, and um, I didn't win, I don't remember what place I went out, but normally they play a cash game after, which I don't participate, because them people, they're high rollers. If you want to play any hand, it costs two dollars to play it, right? So if I like my cards, I'll pay two dollars. Boom. But um, they quickly raise, and they don't just raise like what the blinds are, like two dollars or three or five. The butt heads will raise like fifteen, twenty. Once they raise fifty, are you freaking kidding me? So, I don't normally play because I lose. Especially if I chase a ham. But guess what, y'all? Last night, I took all them bitches' money. Mm. That's right. I paid 40 for the tournament, which I lost, so I didn't get any money there. I have $40 cash that I used to buy in. And so, hmm. I left with, um, I can't do, I don't remember the math. I did the math on $80 that I walked in the door with, right? How much I came out with extra. And the net was $173. Hell yeah. I'll play me some poker. I took all their money. I didn't take all their money. These people, like some of them were like, okay, I got 400 But I don't know how much they won. Or how much of that they started with, you know? That felt good. Mm-hmm. Oh, and um, I hadn't told y'all, but I think I mentioned it like really briefly. I was thinking about buying a beach house. And when I was looking at everything, I hardly had enough money for the um, down payment. I would have used all my savings. So that made me a little nervous. 
Mm -mm -mm. Well, it's a monthly quest there. Right, but um, the insurance quote, quote for Plaid came in. I was like, oh, hell no. It was like um, 7000 almost 8000 a year with a high deductible. And almost a, almost 10000 with a low deductible. When I added that, windstorm insurance, home insurance, taxes, the average with the highest deductible possible would have averaged my premium for insurance and taxes to be almost... Well, over $900 a month, plus utilities, plus rent or mortgage. Mm -mm. And it was being rented, but the problem is if it's not rented, I can't afford $2,000 a month. Hell, yeah. so I gave up on that. And then I'm like, hmm. I realized then that I had saved some money. So it was like a breath of fresh air, like I could breathe. Because I put money, because I'm single, right? I put money in an emergency fund. Like three months of living expenses. So, anyway. I went. This is going to be all over the place. But I went to, um, online and saw this lady on this website called Virage Sale. In my area, she had a Cowboys coffee mug. It was a starter, and it said Cowboys below it. So, I, you know, I told her I wanted it. She said for a couple dollars more, you can put a name on it. I'm like, oh, okay. Does it have to be a player's name or can it be my name? She said, your name. So, I really am sorry. I meant to bring it with me. If you follow me on Instagram, I posted a picture there. Of the front and the back of it. So, I had to put Pookie on the back of it. I love that mug. I meant to put it on the bring it home, but it's at work. Because I was drinking coffee out of it. So, anyway. I'm like, this shit's pretty cool. What she did is like, she customized the vinyl and put it on the cup for me. I'm like, I could do that. I have a little extra cash. What, what's it entail to do that? Because my mom was going crazy, right? I could do t-shirts, like heat transfer t-shirts. I could do um, decals for cars. For these, for the walls, I mean, sky's the limit. So, I could use it for personal, for gifts. I could also use it for extra money. So, I started researching. There's so many vinyl cutters out there. That I'm, it was so confusing. So, I finally, I settled on one. I was like, I'm going to get it. And then I got some colored vinyls. And that transfer tape you use to kind of put it on there that you peel off to stick to something. So anyway, that, my folks, is coming in Tuesday. I'll keep it posted on how that goes. I don't have to learn your software and everything. Hopefully it'll be easy. I would like to make a like a coffee mug or just a car sticker. It says like eat with Pookie or something creative. Well, the vinyls are like single color, uh, not like gradient. So it can be multiple colors if you do them separate and lay it on. I don't know. It's cool to do a t-shirt too. If you guys have any opinion on that, let me know what you think. So I'm really excited about that. I think it'll be fun. Freaking fun, okay? And I could go crazy with some cowboy stuff. Oh. Just saying. Oh, I watched this movie the other day. It's called Mail Order Wife. I thought it was a documentary. So I'm, I'm going to watch this because maybe I can get a mail order husband. If they have them. So it starts out in the preface is that 
the people making the documentary will pay this dude money that's required to do the mail order wife thing in exchange for filming the process right so he he meets this woman and she's um I don't know her nationality is she's Asian of some sort and um uh, uh, yeah she doesn't speak English but anyway she comes to town she meets this guy and the guy that is the buying her if you will is some like just just I don't know not anybody I would want to date someone probably should do a mail order because it's not just the way he looks but his personality so that can you see he's showing him him showing her how to clean a toilet how to clean other things how to cook so my he's using her to be his maid and then <laughs> follow along because there's a twist all right I promise you so then the Asian lady, she starts to learn English a little bit. Um, she ends up going to the guy who's filming the documentary because she's concerned. So she showed a videotape where he would take her down in the basement, have her take off her clothes. You know, it's like not cool stuff at all. So um, the documentary guy is like, I'll protect you. So she stays with him while they straighten things out. He's got a girlfriend. His girlfriend's hosting a dinner and he's cooking. And then she gets mad. So she's mad because apparently he started sleeping with her. And she wasn't happy because he had the girlfriend and he only slept with her when he wanted to. So she goes back to a crazy guy. And documentary guy goes back to her and leaves his girlfriend. They get married. So he marries the Asian lady. <clears throat> she wants kids bad. He does it. She leaves. So she's gone back to the other country. So he goes back to crazy. And says, hey, I want her back. I love her. I should have let her have kids. Whatever. So. One of the documentary guys that does the sound. They do a trickery. Because she's back on the, the side again where... You like look for women to buy or whatever. And um, so the sound guy's dad volunteer or agrees to be the a rich old man who wants a woman. And he's married. So they convince her to come down. They mean they're supposed to go to a yacht that they're borrowing from Jose Canseco. So anyway... They go to the yacht, or they're getting ready to go to the yacht, and they're following them from the airport to document everything. So it's documentary guy, sound guy, and crazy man all together following sound guy's dad and the Asian lady. And uh, he t he makes a stop at a hotel, a motel. I'm like, what? Sound guy's man is married. Pervert. So he brings her in there to have sex with her. So documentary guy goes in and interrupts and tells him to stop it. She comes out and he comes clean on what, what's going on. She went downstairs. Crazy guy comes out. They're arguing. They're throwing each other in a pool. She gets mad and leaves. She's done with everybody. <clears throat> and at the end they show like well I guess she just wasn't meant for us and, and they're toasting like oh well what uh crazy guy's like well it's my birthday I gotta see Jose Canseco whatever well, right and it ends and credits start rolling just as it starts rolling they're showing crazy guy next to the Asian lady and she's like real meek you know like got her head down and real quiet so it was like in the beginning when he first came, when she, she mm, excuse me, I'm spitting food, when she first came out. Anyway, 
So he's saying, showing pictures to the documentary guy, like, this is her mother, or this is her aunt in the village. An Asian lady just starts out of the blue laughing, and she's like, I'm sorry, I can't. I'm like, what the hell? She's She knows English. She's laughing. She sounds normal. Turns out, y'all, that was not a real documentary. Yeah. It was like watching The Sixth Sense. Where I was totally at the very end, just like, what? It all came together. <laughs> I mean, it wasn't that great of a show. But I, I went, watched through it. I tell you, watch it, but I done told you about it all. So I was telling my friend about that. And he's like, it's like a mockumentary. All I know, y'all, they had me fooled. I've been talking. I ate almost half. Uh, I did eat. I'm on the last piece to make half. Mm -hmm. So, it was called Mail Order Wife, I think. If you want to see it. I was shocked at the end. I swear to God, I thought that was a documentary. <laughs> it was not. At all. I, now I'm like, okay, that's why everybody's so weird. That makes sense. Because I know there's some off people. Some crazy people. Anyway. uh, I'm going to try to do my yard after this. Because it's Saturday. It's windy. It looks like it's going to rain. And I probably ought to mow. Um, I'm supposed to go to my sister's boyfriend's barbecue cook-off. But if it's going to rain, I'm not going. In this room, I have some things I still need to... I try to start organizing. And I went down this rabbit hole of a stack of papers. If you guys are ever cleaning and or <clears throat> organizing like a storage room or something... Do not fall into the trap of looking at old papers and going through them. You should have everything clean before you start messing with it. Because what happens is you got a stack here to throw away. A stack that has to be shredded. A stack that needs to be filed somewhere. Maybe you want to scan some. And then all you got stacks everywhere. I did find three savings bonds. One from 1990, 91, and 92. They were $50 savings bonds. Well, my grandmother gave me one and two to my daughter when she was little. And so she paid $25. In maturity, they were $50. And with interest, y'all, they're over $80 each. <laughs> so I'm like, well, hell, I'm cashing that in. Might as well. So I called my daughter. She's excited. So one of them was mine, so she's going to get about $160. Bucks. She's happy about that. So it is. And it's kind of funny how... um the guy I'm seeing a little bit here and there, his nickname just fell into Beardy because he has a beard. He did trim it to about here. Just not down to here anymore. It looks good. Still sweet, man. He FaceTimed me yesterday, y'all. First time he ever did that. And he's in the car. He's like, see, so-and-so is his daughter. I was not ready to meet his daughter. But anyway, he told me he sent, hey, Chloe. He told me he showed her a picture of me and him. Because we went to the beach at a sunset. And he said, isn't she pretty? And he said, yeah. I told him, I said, you know, we still need to have that talk. Because I kind of like the way things are where we kind of go out here and there. But not wanting to commit. I really like it. It's like, go out here and there. I still got my quiet, my private time. It's really nice. I shook loose the other guy that I still had potential. It was really touchy feeling. Like we'd be eating and he'd have to reach over and just like touch. Oh, I like some pizza. Touch me right here on my elbow. Like he'd just like real quick, let me grab it. And I'm like, one time I was eating. Well, he was holding my hand, right? We're sitting down eating. He's left handed. I'm right handed. And I start eating, and I'm like, I keep eating. He's eating, but we're holding hands. And I, I told him that's too much. 
So I said, we need to slow it down a little bit. I think it's too much affection. And anyway, basically he thought I was trying to change him because of that. I said, I was just trying to get you to slow things down, but if you feel like you're having to be ch to change, then we're probably not a good fit. And, um, kind of looked at that. And then about an hour later, he's like, I think we're not perfect for each other, but we are a good fit. And I would miss spending time with you because we were together like a week or so going out and stuff, but I didn't answer. And then the next night when I was in the strip club playing poker, he texted me, asked if I was okay and if we could chat. And I said, I'm okay. And no, you heard me right. I went to a titty bar. I did. There was a poker tournament there. I'm like, oh my God, I signed up for it. Had no idea it was at a titty bar. Never in my life have I been in one of those places. So, when I get there, it's kind of early, so they're not dancing yet. And they sent us up in this room at the top, so no boobies there. They have waitresses that were reasonably dressed. But during break, we had all that got to go downstairs. We got to protect the chips up here, you know what I'm saying? So I go down there, I'm like, all right, well, let me see what's going on. And I checked the beauty, I was like, they ain't got no titties. Sorry if this is not age appropriate. I should have warned you first. But they're so skinny. They're like, got nothing. Mm. There was one. It was more full figured. But I was like, I don't see the appeal. I'm sorry. I mean, I was like, okay, well, I'm going to look and see what they do on a pole. And I'll get some tips, you know. Because I have this pole in my garage. It could be a pole. If you know what I'm saying. But it's in the garage. Anyway, they were just like holding on a pole, walking around it real slow, like sexy. They weren't doing anything fancy, any special moves, nothing. So I'm like, I can't learn nothing from this. One of them, you know, jumped up on it a time or two or did the leg around the swing thing. But they weren't working for their money. And, and to be honest, nobody was tipping them. There's two people that went up and put some money in their G-string th thing but that was it that was it y'all all those men from poker standing around watching not one of them would give them a dollar cheap ass I wasn't about to do it mm -mm. so I went to this other area where they had like pool tables and stuff I sat down and I waited and I could see in the back room this dude was getting a lap dance <laughs> on a oh that's where the moves come in. Mm-hmm. Crazy. I don't get the point in those places because you see it and whatever, you get all happy, but then you got to go home by yourself. Oh, maybe if you pay enough, you don't. Um, can y'all see Chloe? <laughs> her, her, her tail's right here between her legs. It almost looks like another leg. Say hi. I love that cat. Anyway. Oh, she almost fell off the bed. Speaking of bed, this is a day bed, y'all. Look, my arms are stretched. It will not touch to each end. What is she doing? <laughs> Smell it. <laughs> but when I look at the video... It looks like I'm in a, a little bench, but look y'all. Anyway, I ate way more than I would normally eat. That's what I get for putting a pizza in front of my face. And she settled in now. She'll probably hang out here for a while. The Cowboys player got somebody named Taco. I saw that. Anyway, that's it. Oh, shout outs. I'm sorry. I got shout outs. I got a bunch of them. Beardy wants to know what I'm doing. He don't know about this. And yo, he ain't gonna. Not for a while.
Okay, so I got some shout outs. One from Tanya Kovalets. Hey, Tanya. Thanks for commenting and here's your shout out. And then um, India Coleman. After I said I deleted all my information, these came through as new ones. So India, I hope you're doing well. Thanks for watching my videos. Y'all, she's about to fall. Can you see her? She's so fat. She's on the edge. She loses her balance. She's going down. But you know how cats are with balance. And then Toad's Time. Love that username. And Shannon Rockefeller. Huh? Shannon, what's she doing? Shannon writes me a lot, y'all. She's been doing a uh, painting in her house and she was like telling me, you know, sugar plum yum, you need to get rid hail to the no. That's what she was like, Pookie, you deserve way better. She knew a little bit more than you guys did. Let me just say that because she writes me. So I write her and tell her things that I hadn't put in the letter, but um, she was a hundred percent right. Uh, I'm sure he's good for somebody. He just wasn't good for me. Um, Gertrude Honey Lemon. That's awesome. Y'all, I used to have an RV, and I named her Gertrude. I love that name. Gertrude. Thanks for watching, y'all. That was it. Y'all are awesome. I appreciate y'all. Davos, you know, when I asked what I should talk about, someone said uh, TV shows. Uh, so I did bring up the movie. Um, bad, uh, uh, what are the sex stories? Bad sex partners, crazy childhood or teenage stories. I mean, I, to be honest, I wasn't. I didn't have much crazy stuff. Told y'all in another video about the time I almost got kidnapped as a kid. Um, knocked out the window a time or two. And as far as bad sex partners, let me just say this because I know it's like family friendly show sometimes, but. Um, I think the biggest issue I've had is that there are selfish lovers. That's all I'm going to say. And I'm not going to say necessarily that they're bad, but they're selfish. There's one or two that's like, no, you come first. You know what I'm saying? Dave, oh, you said, to ask, you mentioned this, so I'm bringing it up. But a lot of them, it's like, let, hey, it's all about me. Not me, but them. That's the biggest problem. Not that there's a lot. I'm just saying. You know what I'm saying? When you're in a relationship, that's kind of whatever. Anyway, I'm going to stop talking about that. So, that's it. I'm closing this up. Sorry, my battery died. I was just saying that I close this up. I'm done. Chloe wants to say hi. No one here. Listen. You probably didn't hear that. Why don't you talk louder, Chloe? Come here. Oh. Here's my chunky monkey. Mm -hmm. <laughs> She's like, leave me alone, Mom. Oh. Oh. What are you doing, Chloe? Say hi. Does she look distressed? <laughs> She's like, Mommy, you're exposing me to the world. Hi, buddy. Okay, guys. I'm so chewing. <clears throat> mm hmm. All right. Thank you for watching. Subscribe if you're not already. Leave a comment. And uh, let me know what you think about the vinyl stickers. If anybody's creative out there and wants to come up with some kind of a creative saying for Eat With Pookie that I could put on my car sticker for me, that'd be cool. Um, if you're creative and you can do like one or two color um, logo or something, that'd be cool too. Um, uh, my email address is eatwithpookie at gmail.com. 
you want to send it. Don't send me nothing dirty, y'all. Don't do it. Anyway, that's it. I can't wait to see y'all again. I almost went a whole nother week with that. I said I was going to do two a week, but I've been busy with poker and such schedules. So leave a comment. I love to hear from you guys and write me a letter. Shoot, I'll write back. That's what I do. Take care and I will see you in my next video. All right. Okay. Bye, y'all. Bye. Bye, Felicia.